Hello and welcome back to Unmasking the Trans Movement with John Euler. I'm your host, Brad Wilder. Last time on the show, a fantastic guest, Linda Blade, was with us. She is in charge of sporting activities in Alberta. And John, I know that uh, that wasn't necessarily her correct title, but uh, I wanted to leave something for, for you to discuss about where Linda comes from and what Linda's all about. Brad, we're so pleased that Linda can be back with us. We actually had to break earlier than normal because Linda had a hot off the press um, news press that she had to attend to. Uh, she is not only an expert in the field and trainer, and by the way, if anybody would like to have Linda consult or do some training, I'm going to ask her to uh, let our audience know how they can uh, contact her. So, Linda, welcome back. Uh, tell our audience how they can uh, contact you and give them an update on what you were just doing as far as this report and you, you're burning the candle at both ends now, and you are an author of an important book called Unsporting. People need to know how the, as a matter of fact, uh, tell us the subtitle. If you'd hold your book up again and tell us about the report, and then we're going to get into the concerns of men in women's sports. So Unsporting. It's a, uh, trans activism and science. Uh, science denial. I destroy go, sport. You can tell my glasses, huh? <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, we... yeah, Amazon. Uh, if you just go to Amazon.com, Sporting.com, and you can uh, order it through Amazon. <clears throat> okay, we left off at sort of a cliffhanger. Um, yes. We had to go do a a, a, a news uh, interview very briefly. You were yes. back. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you were addressing for the audience, so they know this is hot off the press. Yeah, so I was explaining about the fact that there was a survey done of Canadian high-performance female athletes, finally, because they've hardly ever been interviewed or asked what their opinion is of, of male-bodied athletes coming into their sport. And um, when the survey was happening last spring, 2022, uh, Athletes Ally, Ally, which is a, a USA-based uh, trans activist organization, literally got wind of this and wrote the Canadian government a letter asking the Minister of Sport to stop the survey and stop asking females their opinion. And so the the survey was about halfway underway and the government of Alberta, of, of Canada, excuse me, complied uh, and stopped funding the survey. And um, so basically, uh, and that was a USA a, a, a group in another country asking for them to not inter, or not to find out what their own female athletes think. But anyway, there was enough responses on the survey by then that the authors could go ahead and write up the report. And then when they wrote up the report, they came up with, surprise, surprise, not really surprising to me, that 91 and almost 92% of female athletes agree that athletes should have the right to compete in a dedicated female category in sports, that's uh, in the sex-affected sports. And 85% agreed or just excuse me disagreed that gender identities are more important than biological sex when deciding eligibility criteria for high performance sports categories and that just goes on and on so basically an overwhelming number of responses saying women in canada really do object to having male born athletes in their sports but they were never consulted before this and um so the authors of the report do remind Canadians that both the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms and the Canadian Human Rights Act outline that the Canadian government should not discriminate against girls and women on the basis of sex in relation to laws, programs, employment, and services. And that does include sports. And women and girls in this country of Canada do have a right to sex space, spaces and privacy and not being discriminated by having a male athlete in their midst who has an overwhelming physical advantage and obviously causing them distress in terms of safety and other things. And not just in Canada, Linda, right? All right. the world now, in Western world, in the mm -hmm. U.S. as well, we have Leah Thomas, mm -hmm. uh, who uh, is a guy who dresses in women's underwear and drag and now has invaded 
uh, the swim competition, the uh, swimming sports uh, mm -hmm. for Penn State, and the, the girls there on the team, the young women, have talked about how this guy, being an intact male, just disrupts right and ability to, to focus on the sport. Let's say one of them, you know, certainly conservatively, 20% of all women have been sexually violated in one way or another, have been had their boundaries crossed. I would say uh, much higher, probably 40 at the very least. So now you have women that are in a confined space, just like in prisons. These men are gaining direct access and in my estimation, what's the real issue for them? With my work with sex offenders and men that have become deviant, porn tends to cause a man to become more and more, not only does he objectify, but eventually he ends up with a deep-seated malevolence toward women. He becomes a potential danger to kids. And what better way to tweak women what better way to traumatize women than to force their way into the women's change rooms locker rooms shower area like in we spa we have they're doing the same thing in rape shelters they're doing the same thing in prisons this is a huge issue not only are are women being denied hard-earned medals but there's a real safety factor, Linda, that has to be a concern of yours for the girls and the young women that you oversee. Well, and it's very, very true, John, that the minute a sports organization calls for self-identification into a sport category instead of having it based, be based on sex or on any kind of biological sex, um, well, what happens then is automatically they have to admit now that they that their that uh, policy applies to locker rooms, and if you're on a trip, to who gets to stay in which hotel rooms, um, and as president of a sports association, I am horrified to think that there might even be a middle-aged father of, you know, three girls who suddenly he himself suddenly identifies as 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 a woman or a trans, and now it becomes the chaperone. And now we have a problem with safe sport in the in the where the where the children are changing or in, in the hotel rooms. Um, you know, some people say I'm exaggerating, but I'm not because that could happen. And even if it even happens once, um, to me that means that you're opening the door to a predator who could be using the trans issue to just come in into women's and girls' spaces and make it very dangerous for those those women and girls. Linda, I can guarantee you, as someone that has worked with sex offenders for 14 years, almost now 15 years, 11 plus years in the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections and now in the community, I'm doing community-based treatment, I have about 45 guys. I want to assure people, and therefore I want to affirm women with their concern, as well as parents of kids, that, you know, it's interesting Predators know us better than we know them, and they play upon our, our desire to give people the benefit of the doubt. We want to be nice. We want to be caring. The average person does. There's a part of us that thinks, well, certainly no self-respecting sex, uh, sexual predator would stoop so low as to, and that's where they can uh, they capitalize upon that. So I want the audience to understand that Men who predate, men who are predators, ready, shock upon shock, they have no morals and ethics. They'll go there. They will dress in any way necessary to gain access to women or kids. They will dress as drag queens. They will dress as furries, or they will claim to be all about wanting to just express themselves on women's sports teams. But here's one, and Linda, you and I were talking uh, prior to the program, and you were asking, you know, what what are associations supposed to do? That is a very legitimate question. Are we here anti groups of No, we're not anti anybody. We are pro the protection of women and children. So my suggestion for any sports association is, including the Olympics, is this: if you want to have quote unquote trans athletes. Um, now, my contention is this. There's no such thing as trans. They're just uh, confused people that are confused that likely have been preyed upon. 
But if you but using the term, so if you want to have trans athletes eventually have their own competition, let them compete. But here's something: if you want to separate out the uh, likely predators from not, so if you want to find out the legitimate guys, and Jen Smith is a legitimate trans in my estimation from Canada, he's leading the call for a national inquiry into the medicalization of foster care kids, about 40% of those kids being sucked into the foster care system that are being medicalized come out of the foster care system in Canada. It's probably about the same in the U.S. So my recommendation is this. You tell a biological male that has an XY chromosome, he cannot, okay, for the time being, he's still destroying the sport, but he he cannot access the change rooms, the locker rooms, and the shower. He can't go in there. And he cannot take his cell phone camera in there. So he can't access that. You watch what happens. There was a rugby player out in Australia that was beating the tar out of women. But as soon as he was denied access to the locker room, he quit. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's really interesting. And... Um... I've seen some of the Canadian sports policy documents that literally say not only can they go in there, that they can not they can go into the women's uh, race, they can go into the women's locker room, they can go and, and sleep in the women's uh, wherever, you know, the bedrooms are, like in terms of on a team trip. And on top of that, it will be considered hate if the women – dare to talk about it or any coach or any parent dares to talk about it. I mean, this is unbelievable what we are doing in Canada in terms of trying to be nice people and not hateful. And yet we're shutting down any possibility of safeguarding. And I just cannot personally as the president and our board, we just can't accept that this has to be the way to go. We want to divide sports on the basis of biological sex, as we've always done. And if, you know, and people, if they sign up for our association, that's how they have to compete. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. There you go. So my contention is this, Linda, you will weed out the vast majority of these guys that -hmm. are interested in going into women's sports if you tell them they cannot go into the changing rooms, the locker rooms, the showers. They just, they'll drop out. What's right. behind and what's come from this Leah Thomas deviant male? Uh, as mm-hmm. a matter of fact, I right, it's just been exposed. This guy was into everything that I said he was into, um, heinous wow. stuff, BDSM stuff. There's people have uncovered uh, posts, including uh, he's holding up a little jar that supposedly are his own testicles, saying he went through the surgery. I, I've got, I'd like proof. I'd like mm-hmm. proof. Mm-hmm. I don't believe those are his. Mm-hmm. This is right. We have a hard time believing that men like this would be unethical, really. Mm-hmm. Well, we do know one thing that no man thinks it's a reasonable thing to dress in women's underwear and drag if they haven't saturated themselves in porn. So we do know that. Therefore, we're inviting a man that accesses porn, likely, and my contention also is this the night before the race and the night before he's going into the locker room to look at the women, I mean, so, to be around the women, he's accessed a lot of porn the night before. And how do we not know he's not taking pictures of these women and videos, uploading them onto the dark web? This is a massive concern. It's a safety concern, and it's putting women and children at risk. And, Linda, I can only imagine the challenges. And as a matter of fact, Brad, you're a father and you're a coach, and you were referencing that this is creating a challenge for all coaches and, and those in charge of athletes. It really is at this point in time. Um, we're starting to see uh, at the beginning of the year coaching this hockey season, I asked the question of our association whether or not um, the uh, inclusion of transgenderism would be part of our coaching experience and training and, um, yeah, he came back with, I'm not sure if they're going to implement it just yet. Now, I took my assistant's, my, my, my assistant coach is my son, um, who is uh, 19 years old, and uh, he's just getting into coaching for his first year after stepping away from high school hockey and, uh, you know, he had a chance to go to the States and play college, but um, COVID kind of messed that up for him. <clears throat> but bottom line is this. 
Um, as a coach, they said that that wouldn't be happening or they didn't feel that would be happening. As a coach for 20 years, I didn't have to go back through any kind of training this year at all. But my son took the coach's level one and level two training for hockey. And during that training, guess what? There it was being presented so that now he knows. They denied to a guy like me who's 55 years old that it's not happening. And yet I can still see over the shoulder of my 19-year-old son who's taking this, this course and, and they're pushing it. And we have to be inclusive and blah, blah, blah. So my question to you, Linda, as you know, a certified professional sport um, individual, let's, let's quickly ask the question of how many people, what kind of a percentage? Are we talking 10%? Are we talking 1%? I believe it's less than 1%, but I want to get an expert's opinion. I don't believe there's that many trans athletes that are going to come in and flood the system. Yeah, not right now until we open the door to allowing more of the people who want to take advantage. But for right now, I think you're right. It's somewhere between uh, probably 0.5 and 1%. Uh, it's not a lot. And and so people would say, well, if it's not that many, why wouldn't you just accommodate? Well, the fact is, is again, we're going around in circles. But if you accommodate one or two, then you're opening the door. And you have to believe what they say and accept whoever says what they say they are. Um, and in one medal, but in woman lost, you know, a loss to a woman or one position is one too many if it's not fair. And one too many, one man in a woman's locker room because they took advantage of a policy is one too many. One predator is one too many. Uh, so really, we're actually bending over backwards. I think the thing that you're pointing out, Brad, is why should we change the entire sports world and our policies to, to accommodate maybe one or maybe 0.5% of the population at most. Um, there, there will be a lot more, but I think if we allow it to co go on, but um, I think for now, my recommendation is that sports in Canada and everywhere else in the world, it should be, the category should be based on biological sex, and we need to get back to the ability to even verify that. And listen, a cheek swab is not in invasive, uh, it's not too hard to bring that back and just say, look, you know, you have your certificate. I did my cheek swab, you know, no problem. One time. That's all it is. Just tell us who you are. Linda, John, I can't say enough about having you on the program today. We've had an excellent conversation, uh, for the full hour. If we put it all together, um, it, it really, uh, exposes a lot for parents, um, I think that there's going to be athletes out there that are going to want to see this as well to, to get an understanding. We, we say that we're trying to educate the parents, but the parents need to still educate their own children about this movement and about the destruction it can cause. And I think that uh, parents' in, uh, involvement is going to be critical going forward. At the same time, um, you know, your doors are always open. And that's what I love about having you people like you on the show, Linda and John, is that your doors are open. And if people need to reach out, they can. Um, you can find us at Unmasking the Trans Movement with John Euler. Um, the website, unmaskingthetransmovement.com. Please check it out. Thanks again, guys, for being on the show today. Um, we'll continue this at some point with Dr. Uh, with Linda. Uh, I was going to say Dr. Linda. Are you a Dr. Linda? Yeah, I am. I am okay, a Dr. Linda, great. yes. I, I, Dr. I enjoy Linda saying Blake, yes. that word, Dr. Linda, so that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> we'll get back to you real soon, and we'll have more on the uh, Unmasking the Trans Movement. Thanks again for being here today, both of you. Perfect. Thanks for having me. Thank you.